Yeah, all right, greetings and salutations. My name is Comic Fire, and welcome back from work at Tower Shoujo. Screw what happened in the last episode, let's just push forward. I don't know if I read this, so I'll read it again. <clears throat> How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. It should be, unless the librarian is, like, absent or something. I think you're right, Shichan. We think the library is open. It's on, like, the second floor. You can't miss it. Do you want us to show you where it is? I, did I just make her British? Jesus. No thanks, it's okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye! One flight of stairs up, and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. The problem is the library's whereabouts are not as easily as determined as one would think. Classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but there's a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them, or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bend in the ladder and choose my direction at random. After I turn the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not close. It's not open, either. Just barely a jar that I can see that it's open and nothing else. It makes sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means someone's inside and I can ask for directions, no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider to the school can't be shaken from my mind, so much that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks open as if groaning from a deep sleep, though it was much easier to open than I had anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head even further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello on my lips quickly snatched away. Well, hello. This is not what I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figures taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway, staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacups and opens her eyes, but doesn't look at me. Why, hello there. May I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's a soft, measured voice that reminds me she's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, hi, I'm uh, sorry for intruding. I was just uh, kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as though it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Uh, <laughs> thanks. I slowly step toward another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and the saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the slight cloudiness to her eyes must mean means that she must be at least partially blind like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be at least half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamaku? Ah, yeah, I uh, just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I hasten to match before realizing the futility of the action. I'm Lily Sato. Pleased to meet you. Hisao. Hisao Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there, her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty finger to measure the right amount of water in the cup. Girl, that's nasty, you putting your finger in my tea. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone else seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problems working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have work around for problems I've never even thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the offer of preparing the drink. I don't know, it's like getting kind of difficult to like speak and read at the same time, I don't know. So... Her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which room are you looking for? 
It's not often this classroom is visited after school. Uh, the school library. Shizune and Ma uh, I mean, some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the tea, tea cup as she nods. The small metallic tapping coming from the tea cup indicating it's being stirred. I am aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? Uh, that's right, I'm in the science room with uh, Muto. She gives a small giggle before setting down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the tea table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him. Most do. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems more like a bad moment to bring it up. Nonetheless, it smells quite nice. I think, hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Atal. It tastes really nice. It tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. Lily, please. There's no need to be too formal. She says, in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. <laughs> oh well. I guess I try to ask her about herself, as it really does seem as though she's catering to me. So which class are you from? Which class are you from? I fucking hate me now. <laughs> I imagine it's from one of the third-year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and it's spe and specifically for both blind and partially blind students. Do you wax on and wax off? Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem the least bit put off by it. <laughs> my, my. There's no need to change your speech on my account. <laughs> sure. Sorry, I guess I'm really showing my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which include her, it seems. Also ready to jump ship from this particular pop it, I... Topic. I... I never learned how to pronounce this word. Sag? I'm gonna say sag into another. Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I used to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as a class representative don't leave enough time for an official club, so friends and I use this room for having tea. Class rep, huh? Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. Excuse me. While Shizune is blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school club. Oh, what kind of clubs are there to join? Hmm. The more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunch times, the baseball club, and the book club in a room near the library. There are also numerous small ones too, though, such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if the school shares the same rules as my old one. Uh, is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, though it is encouraged. Ah, <laughs> good. It's a relief. I've really let my guard down around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. As I look over the window over her shoulder, I notice the light coming into the room with a distinctly orange tint. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Ah, time's gone by quickly. Sorry? Right, she's blind, of course, you can't see the sun setting. Yeah, it just looks like the sun is starting to set. It seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of time. Sorry, Hassel. I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly moved to allay her concern. Ah, <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, the library's still open, isn't it? She pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizune when I had the chance. But Lily seems likely to know in any case. True. It's open till 6.30 on weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms that I have well enough time to get there. Uh, I might get going in that case. I mean, hey, it's been nice talking to you, Lily. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hands still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it, shall I show you to where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it all right. Well, unless my navigational skills fail me. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. It's all right. I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case. I could introduce you. This gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. Now, if you're sure, that'd be great. Thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight retractable cane that had been slipped in the handle of her bag on the floor. 
Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Lily's looks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, while Lily's is for navigation. Together we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers, we slowly walk through the hallway. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm-looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than either wing. Hey, ladies first! She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we file in. To the left is a wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. It easily dwarfs my old school's library, with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old-world air. There don't seem to be a whole lot of students here. Considering the time, it isn't a big surprise. Everyone's, either in school. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or at the dorms. Yuko, are you here? She says to the thin air, since the librarian doesn't seem to be present, and of course Lily can't see that. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Aww. The origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to an extremely rigid attention. Hi, Lily. Uh, how can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual, and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. Uh, it's nothing. I just uh, hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk when I was looking for it. A pencil dropped. When I was looking for both of them, you came in and surprised me. Are you all right? I'm sorry. I couldn't have known. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing. I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that I guess she could be any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, worse things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shuffles some papers around on the counter for no reason. This seems to be a recurring theme. A little shorter than really Lily. Replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look, she seems to fit a library perfectly. Ah, Lily, did you get my message? Message... Mm -hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived. Right, right, they finally came! I can't believe it took so long, but... Amidst her celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure, she does notice me from the corner of her eye and freeze on the spot when she does. Oh no, I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry! The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me, Yuko. This is Hisao, a new student. Hisao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Hey, I'm pleased to meet you. Hisao, right, Hisao. Pleased to meet you too, Hisao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. You go off and arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell his house a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. I... Please, Lily, I can't. I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. How it's any responsibility at all, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... So, there are a lot of books in Braille here? I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops in my head. It seems it works partially, as Yuko seems to, well, not exactly relax, but at least look slightly less tense. Well, I think about a third or a fourth of Yamaku's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that would be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Um, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. HA! That's probably why. They spend more on new books than my salary, and I have to organize and shelf all of them. It's just so troublesome, and they weigh so much. I wish I could quit this job. Very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much info. Hey, I'll go uh, check the aisles out if you don't mind. Probably the best of all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, you go. I would have those books if that was all right with you. My first impression was right, the library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I studied the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. Guess I'll never be stuck for choice in here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there's large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is, a library. As if it the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lily's in, snuck with us in here, unless it was here to begin with. 
Something about that just puts me at ease, it's just like before. I reached the end of the aisle and found a collection of desks set up for study or personal reading. Going a little further, though, I discover a nice quiet corner at the back. While the rest of the library is the odd student sitting at a desk either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on several, one of several beanbags. It's that dark-haired girl from my class. The one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. But who could she be? I guess we're just gonna have to find out in the next episode. <laughs> God, I love cliffhangers! And you all. Love you.